Hello everyone, I am Xiao Liu from Product Definition with Diesel Systems Outworks. Today, I'd like to introduce a method to show you how to generate grayscale handmap images. In this video, I will show you how to generate grayscale handmap images for this polyhedron geometry, and these grayscale handmap images can be used to generate 3D textures in 2019 SOLIDWORKS. There are many software packages you can use to generate a grayscale handmap image. In this video, I will use Blender to generate a grayscale handmap image. But please note that this video is not an advertisement for Blender. And SOLIDWORKS Cooperation has no collaborations with Blender. If you use Blender, you may consider making a donation to the Blender development team. And you can make the donation here. Now let's begin to generate a grayscale high map image. To have the proper orientation for your model in the Blender, you have to make the sketch on the front plan and extrude the model in Z direction. Then you should save your model as an STL file. If you want to refine your mesh for the model, you can go to Options and change the deviations and angles. In this case, I will keep the default setting. Then click Save. To me, the mesh is sufficient enough, so I will click Yes to save the model. Then you can open the Blender and import your model. To import your 3D model into Blender, first you need to delete the initial model. To do so, you can right-click on the model and press the X key and then click Delete. Then go to File, Import, STL and find your file location. And double-click on your file to import. Typically, your model will be very large in Blender, so you can zoom out to find your model. To make a grayscale hand map image for this model, first you need to move the model to the origin. To do so, you can right-click on the model and press Shift Ctrl Alt plus C, and then click Geometry to Origin. Then we need to set up our camera. Go to Outline window and left-click Camera. First, let's set up the resolution for the final image. For a simple geometry like this, 512 by 512 pixels should be good enough. However, if your model has a lot of details, you may want to consider a higher resolution image. But keep in mind, a higher resolution image may also increase the computational time for the 3D texture generation in the SOLIDWORKS. In this case, we will use 512 by 512. So we change the X to 512 and Y to 512, and also increase the percentage to 100 to have a better quality image. Then we need to set up the lens and the location of the camera. Go to Object Data. To have the real dimension of the geometry, we need to use orthographic as a lens. To change the location of camera, First, we can press N key to show the coordination information of the camera. The camera should be located in the center line of the geometry, so we change X to 0 and Y to 0. Also, the camera should be above the model, so we will increase the Z value to 50. Here is a camera. The camera should be facing down to view the object. To do so, we can change the rotation value to 0. To check the field of view box of camera, we can press zero key. Apparently, current box is too small to capture the entire model. To have the entire model in the field of view box, we need to enlarge the orthographic scale. The orthographic scale should be equal to or larger than the maximum dimension of the model on the XY plane to have the entire model. We can press zero key again to exist the field of view box and check the maximum dimension of the model. As we can see, the maximum dimension on the XY plane is around 200, so we can easily increase the orthographic scale to 200. Right-click on the camera again 
and change the author graphic scale to 200. Another important parameter for camera is clipping interval. Clipping interval shows how deep the camera will capture in Z direction. To have an entire model in the field of view box, you have to make sure your entire model is in the interval of clipping. To check the model in the field of view box, again, you can press zero key. The vertex of the hexagon is supposed to be very close to the edge of the field of view box. However, it doesn't, which means we haven't got entire model in the field of view box. We can enlarge the interval of clipping to have the entire model. We will minimize the start point to zero and maximize the final point to 200. Then we have a right view in the field of view box. Then I will show you how to use Node Editor to have a grayscale hand map image for this 3D model. First, you can enlarge the bottom of the window and change the editor tab to Node Editor. And click Compositing, use Nodes. To have a grayscale image, we need to add a normalized editor. Go to Add, Vector, Normalized and put it in the middle between these two node editor and use steps as input. The normalized editor will normalize the depth information of the 3D model. The far side will have the value of 1 and the close side will have the value of 0. The blender will distribute the gray color based on the normalized value. Then you can press F12 key to check the result and the grayscale image. In this image, the top surface has a black color and bottom surface has a white color. We want to invert the colors. To do so, we can add an invert color node editor and put them in the middle. Last but not the least, we want to remove the noise of displayed setting. We will go to Scene, Color Management, then change the display device from sRGB to NON. Then we will have a desired grayscale image. Now we can save the image. Go to Image and click Save. We want a full size image, so we change the compression to zero. Then change the name to Polyhydrin and save it. Then you can go and check the image. As you can see, the top surface has a white color and the bottom surface has a black color. This is what we want. This is how we create a grayscale hand map image using Blender. Thank you for watching and have fun with your beta test.